Okay, uh, in the last couple of videos, we've been working with the gamma function and just kind of exploring some of its basic properties. Um, so far, we have established it was pretty easy to show that the gamma function of 1 is equal to 1. And we'd also shown this relationship here amongst the gamma function. And in a previous video, we stated that for fractions, for example, the gamma function of one half, that's equal to the square root of pi. We will show this to be true uh, in the next video. And once we have done that, we're going to use our knowledge base of gamma functions to solve various types of uh, integral problems. But what we're going to do in this video here is try to establish just some more of the basic properties of the gamma function, really relying upon this relationship, either as we see it written here, or to say that the gamma function of n equals gamma function of n plus 1 divided by n. For example, um, we might ask ourselves, what would the gamma function of 0 be equal to. Well, we use it, this formula here. Uh, let's see, n is 0, so that would equal the gamma function of 1 divided by 0, or that would equal 1 over 0. So that's infinity. So let's go back and look at our definition here. The gamma function of 0, that means n is 0, so the integral here from 0 to infinity, x to the minus 1, e to the minus x, we can write it as 1 over x, e to the x, dx. We know right away that's an improper integral. We just proved that with these simple steps right here. Uh, what would the gamma function of a negative number be like? Suppose, for example, we had gamma function of negative 1. Using this formula here, then, uh, that would equal the gamma function of negative 1 plus 1, that would be 0, divided by negative 1. So this will equal infinity divided by negative 1, or that will equal minus infinity. Uh, what about, say, gamma function of negative 2? That would be equal to gamma function of negative 2 using this formula up here. That would equal negative 2 plus 1, the gamma function of negative 1 divided by negative 2. And that would equal minus infinity divided by minus 2. Or that would equal plus infinity. So if n is a whole number, the gamma function of minus n will equal plus or minus infinity, depending upon whether n is an odd whole number or an even whole number. Let's say that we want to take the gamma function of a fraction. Suppose we had the gamma function of 5 halves. Okay, we know from above that the gamma function of n plus 1 equals n times the gamma function of n. So if I rewrite this as gamma function of 3 halves, 
plus one. If we use this formula here then, this would equal three halves times the gamma function, three halves, but we can rewrite this. This would equal three halves times the gamma function of one half plus one, and once again we apply our formula here. So this is going to equal three halves and gamma function of n plus one equals n times the gamma function of n. So looking at this, this would be equal to one half times the gamma function of one half. So this would be equal to looks like three fourths. And again we stated before, so far without proving it, the gamma function of one half is the square root of pi. So this would be three fourths times the square root of pi. Now what if we had say a negative fraction. Let's say that we had a gamma function of minus one half. Okay, now it's probably easiest um, if we take our formula here and we write it as gamma function of n equals the gamma function of n plus 1 divided by n. So here the gamma function of minus 1 half that would be equal to the gamma function of minus 1 half plus 1 that's the gamma function of plus one half divided by n, that's minus one half. So this would be equal to, that's the square root of pi, divided by negative one half, that's minus two. So don't want to be labor at this point too much because it's pretty pretty simple to apply. But by using this relationship or rewriting it as this and recalling this, we can derive the gamma function of various fractions or negative fractions for that matter. And before then, it was really easy to show the gamma function of zero, that's infinity. Before we showed the gamma function of one is one, that was easy to prove. And once we know these then, that was pretty easy to establish this fact. that for whole numbers, um, a negative whole number, the gamma function is either going to be plus or minus infinity, depending upon whether that's an odd number or an even number. So these are just some really basic properties involving the gamma function. Um, come back in the, in the next video and we're going to prove this. And once we've done that, using our knowledge base of gamma functions, we're going to look at different types of integrals and how we could solve them previously that uh, they were unsolvable before we had added the gamma function to our arsenal of weapons. Uh, so come back and let's see if we can prove this relationship here.